What up, what up, what up? It's your boy, Auto Dialogue. I got a special guest on the line. So if you don't mind, introduce yourself to the people. Oh, yeah, this is JT, the bigger figure, man, the one and only San Francisco film representative, man, the legend. You know, it ain't a theory. It ain't a mystery. It's actual facts. But down south, they call me Fig Panamera. Yeah, I'm another person, you know, I've created another uh, alter ego, you know, for the generation of uh, listeners in the music world. And then I bring the boy Locks, you know, that's my actor. Signed him also, that's me. You know, and it's, it's three of us. You know, we all got our own lane and we all famous at what we do. So I want to get right into it, my man. I heard you and Tupac and Richie Rich got in the incident back in the day. So if you don't mind, my man, can you give me the play-by-play -play and the details about what happened with the incident? Well, to start it off, it really never was an issue with Tupac. The issue was with Richie Rich. Richie Rich is the one that had the lyrics on the song with Tupac and the governor. The governor from Oakland, Joseph Flowers. And they, he put out an EP. We fuck with the girl. He was good people. He's still good people. This song, it had Tupac and Richie Rich, okay? So um, this is after uh, the movie Juice and Pac was famous. But on this song, Richie Rich had a line that said, uh, I got some broke-ass film on niggas trying to jack me for my gold tones. His grandma lived on Central Street in Filmo. That's up the way. I'm from down the way. But when he said, I got some broke-ass film on niggas trying to jack me for my gold tones, that line was really, it was it was to all of us. But let me tell you what's real, though. I stay strapped with my gat even when I'm in the field, mo. I'm trying to get my eats on. It's Thanksgiving and my cousin said he had a fat feast on. Uh, I'm peeking out my back door. I got some broke-ass niggas trying to jack me for my gold tones. Uh, I'm going out to fun way. Sideways to the next light, nigga, on a one-way. And going in the wrong direction. Time to cock the Glock, cause yo, that's my protection. Right. But it wasn't even that deep. I got ghost on the marks and a Frisco PD. Five niggas in the LTD trying to jack. I never got gaffle like that. So, uh, we heard it. We knew of the song. And then somehow, some way, they booked on the same show that we booked at in San Francisco uh, on Broadway. At the show, um, there was a number of artists that was scheduled to perform, but nobody really got to perform once they got on stage because the fight broke out. Um, Tupac didn't know nothing of it. Um, and if he did, you know, it wasn't no thing that they was like anticipating <laughs> to have nobody from Filmo actually coming to a show looking for them specifically, you know, because of the song. So, uh, and to be on, you know, for the record, Richie Rich wasn't lying about, you know, getting chased through Filmo for his gold tones, for his, for his hundred spoke games, because he absolutely had the cars that would make anybody in any hood want to get access to you. If you live in our hood and you driving around in this car right here, every chance, you know, that's presented, somebody's going to try to get that car. But he was pretty fast, he was pretty quick, and he never was captured. Okay, but the song, you know, it just happened to come out at the time when JT, you know, I'm, I'm pursuing my career now, so I'm going to concerts. And also representing Filmo, anybody say something about this, I got to be saying something about them or doing something about it. But it wasn't just my voice. It was a lot of angry Filmo guys in the building. And, I, <laughs> and uh, it wasn't just based on something I wanted to do. I just knew it had to be done. And I was with it. And Tupac just happened to be part of their crew. And... Um, Shit, man, they outnumber what they gonna do, you know. But Tupac, uh, knowing crowd control <laughs> and Tupac grabbing that mic stand, he put it to work for himself for a few minutes. It was, it was, it was a lot of heart, and he was good with it, you know. A few homies took a few lumps with the, you know, trying to climb on the stage. He was quick to grab that motherfucker and threw the mic down, <laughs> grab the mic stand, and whacked a couple guys. But like once the people started to get on stage, 
he couldn't whack nobody no more. And the stand was taken. And they just took a few bruises, you know. It wasn't too much blood and nothing. But it was definitely, you know, some stomping going on, some kicking. And uh, they got up out of there. We got Tupac necklace. We got the watch. got the ring. And uh, it's people that didn't been shot over the, that jury because in Fillmore, once it came to Fillmore, it was people that wanted those trophies. And I ain't going to say no names, but, you know, it's some guys that just held on to it. <laughs> they was able to hold off the enemies for Tupac jury. But that definitely, you know, he wasn't no punk. The Gub wasn't no punk. And Richie Rich, you know, he just had to take what he had coming. Uh, but he wasn't no punk. He and nobody had a choice. Um, nobody ran and left. Nobody. They all took their bruises, took their punches and shit. But that story is just an authentic story. It wasn't like we hated Tupac. It was that he just happened to be there and he had more shit on than anybody else. So he definitely was a target, you know, uh, for guys in a fight. Of course, the jury is something that you look forward to uh, getting your hands on. <laughs> Anybody in any city, in any condition, a fight break out with jury on, the other party wants it, even if they're losing. So Tupac stood his ground and he tried to fight back even though he was outnumbered. Yeah, Tupac didn't run. He didn't run because he got him some good licks in. He was feeling good. It's just that his his team didn't back him up enough as he swung the, the mic stand. You know, the other guy got the mic stand too, too quick from him, whoever the other person was on stage. So it was two mic stands. But Pac, he was able to get some lumps in, but nobody really backed him up as far as keeping more guys from getting on the stage. That was the only defense that was a for sure defense because people was grabbing people's legs. So some of the guys that was in their crew legs was grabbed. They couldn't really fight. They just got pulled in the crowd. And then there's number punching going on right then and there, you know. Um, but, it, you know, it was all about escaping. They, they they just wanted to get out of one piece. That's what I would want to do too. Just get up out of there. Ain't no use of, you know, trying to take a beating for stripes. He got some in. We got the jury. They got away. No gunfire. No deaths. And the story just goes on. It's just a legendary story that people didn't know. But it was, you know, verified through many ways. I've told the same story over and over. The, the beef wasn't with Tupac. Uh, shortly after that, a couple years, I'm at a video shoot with Tupac. For Mac Mall and Ray Love, ghetto thing, and last night. And at that video shoot, Tupac and them paid me back by stealing two cell phones. They was the chip phones back then. I know I bought them off the street. I had six months service on the motherfuckers, and I was only into them about a month and a half. And I went to the store, and I left them in there with Pac and the Doug, the Doug Light boys. You know, I wasn't thinking he was tripping on that little shit. When I came back and my phones was gone, I knew them niggas was tripping over that shit. I'm like, man, it's me. You know. And then Pac dropped a couple lugs on me about positioning of artists in the video. He told Ray Love, hey, man, this is your video. Get in front. The JT had sold that little spot up. <laughs> and he was the director, so... Of course, you know, my feelings is to a minimum. <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the video shoot, when me and him got to talk, you know, he was stressed out about the case. He was stressed out about the case, the little rape case. And, you know, later Steinberg, there's a friend of mine that was his manager. And she, uh, you know, she the one that really brought me down there to try to get that, that shit resolved so it don't linger on. JT ain't no enemy of Tupac. I never have been. It's just that a situation fucking happened. And he had to stay with who he was with, and I had to ride who I was with. There's no way around it. 
it just happened like that. <laughs> you can't switch sides in the middle of the war. And you can't get no pass to nobody who absolutely with the enemy. And at that day and moment, <laughs> Richie Rich was the enemy. He's not the enemy anymore. But I don't think Richie Rich liked me, you know. He never accepted doing no song with me when I used to try to, you know. Uh, I tried to spin with him a number of times. He just would never do it. <laughs> he never gave no reason, but I knew what it was for. Cause we jumped him in the gov and then at that, at that, uh, at that event. And then the gov got me back in Oakland one day. <laughs> him, pretty black. We was at, uh, Nine ninety twenty nine studios on San Pablo, and uh, we had got into it about the game, and something happened with the game in Yuck Mouth. And uh, him and Pretty Black came to the studio, and he was mad I didn't hold the game there for him longer. <laughs> so he stole on me, and we started fighting in the truck. Yo, me and the gov got into it, but he got a good one in first. Pop! I said, "Oh, this nigga just stole on me in the motherfucking truck." Hell nah. All this shit stemming back from from the goddamn Tupac shit. So Richie Rich got me back. Pac got me back. And Gov got me back. All three of them motherfuckers got me back. But I was part of getting them first. So I guess I got the trophy first. Tupac lost his jewelry. And JT lost the cell phones. Motherfucker. That's some real... Boy, I paid 600 for them phones. I was mad. It was one of them thug life niggas did it or Pac did it itself. I don't know which one. I thought the beef was over. It wasn't over. I came back in my shit and I'm asking niggas just keep smiling and shit. And I'm like, bro, where my phone's at? And nigga Pac just walked in the back of the room. He ain't say nothing. I said, oh, this nigga Pac, man. Them niggas got me out of number. I hope they don't jump me out here right now. <laughs> JT jumped and beat up by Tupac and thug life. God damn it. Now, JT chalked them phones up and act like them phones didn't even matter. Yeah, I couldn't make a call until I seen Mac Moore and the Red Love had to borrow their phone. Yeah, but, uh, you know, that's how I go, man. You know, you do something to somebody, they do it back to you. And then if you get a chance to do it to them, you get their ass back again, too. <laughs> but, uh, nah, that's far as it went. That's, 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 that's the whole story. The whole truth, nothing but the truth. I don't think I left nothing out. No, I didn't. Do you remember how the chain ring and watch looked that y'all took from Tupac? Yeah, it was a diamond ring. The, the ring was the shape of a diamond. It was a bunch of diamonds on the inside. That picture is somewhere right now of Pac performing that night. Uh, I think my man got the picture of Pac on stage, and then we got the picture of him not having the ring. <laughs> Old camera taking ass niggas. <laughs> niggas was working them. Uh, what's the what's that what's that camera called? You take a picture. The uh, Polaroid man, goddamn Polaroid nigga. Imagine the street nigga who brought a Polaroid with him. That's fat rat for you right there. A nigga with a Polaroid. <laughs> what about the chain and watch? The chain. It looked like a uh. What is that? I'm gonna tell you. It's the chain that looked like the Rolex links. Like the like the bracelet of a Rolex with them little them little lumps, them bars. What they call it, a heron bone? Something like a heron bone. But it had links. Hmm. Yeah. It, and at the bottom of it, it came down into like pyramid shape. Like Two pyramids at the bottom connected, you know what I mean, and then connected into the chain. So the two pyramid pieces is like facing opposite direction. Yeah, and that ring, I don't remember what kind of watch or bracelet, but it was all three. You know a nigga ain't coming with just no ring on, but he left with none of that stuff though. That's part for sure. He never tried to get it back. He never called. It never messages never came. Cause that was Filmo beef that was going on. Filmo was beefing with everybody at that time. Niggas from Oakland was selling niggas Filmo niggas cars and then come steal that bitch back. 
fresh cars too. Niggas was getting out the fucking car and then getting right, go right back in the projects and steal them bitches back. Extra keys. Niggas was going to Oakland buying them cars and niggas start shooting shit out and then niggas coming back and shooting back up. <laughs> oh man. Niggas jumped too short and then it turned into some more shit over rapper Fote, but that's another story though. That's a whole, that's a whole another story. <laughs> but one thing for sure, uh, our tradition is fall out with whoever. And we have a long list of rappers that we had to do some do something to. Not over because they was bad people. It was just feel more jealousy. If you shine it, hey man, broke niggas against the rich niggas. We was broke for sure. But Pac had got beat up by the police too. So Pac was going through it in the bay. Pac got into the shootout over there in Marin. That shit was ugly. Little boy got killed. That fuck with Pac forever. Was it his bullets? Was it they bullets? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Somebody's bullets did it. But one thing for sure, Pac didn't start it. Them niggas started it. So he was going through it. And you a movie star now. It's hard to be a movie star. We never met a, a street nigga movie star before. And then you hanging in Oakland and Marine. <laughs> Hell nah. This nigga's in, this nigga was boy, listen. That was amazing. 